On Thursday, WeWork debuted on the stock market after a SPAC merger that reportedly valued the company around $9 billion. This comes two years after the company attempted its first IPO, with a valuation around $47 billion. WeWork's on a long and windy path to the public markets. Here's how it got there. WeWork is a real estate company. Specifically, it's a co-working company, with locations in more than 100 cities around the world. It was founded in 2010 by Israeli entrepreneur Adam Newman and Oregon native Miguel McKelvey. It wasn't the first co-working firm, and it isn't the last, but it made a name for itself in a couple of ways. Here in New York, where WeWork had its corporate HQ, the company culture became somewhat legendary, with free beer at the office, big parties, and even marijuana-fueled private jet rides. Former CEO Adam Newman has taken a lot of flack for this, with people referencing him as a cultish figure who fueled this wild culture and surrounded himself with sycophants. Weird workplace aside, the business grew big fast. That meant acquiring a lot of debt, and since this is a co-working company, huge lease commitments. In 2019, less than 10 years after its founding, WeWork was the largest private office tenant in New York and in London. We reported that it was the sole tenant in at least five major New York buildings, and its 2019 prospectus reported that it had $47 billion in lease commitments over the next 15 years. But what really caught public attention was the way that WeWork, later the We Company, marketed itself. And that hewed closer to the way that tech companies market themselves than the way that traditionally conservative real estate companies do. There was a lot of talk about culture, collectivity, elevating the world's consciousness. There were 94 trademark names and phrases under their umbrella, including the word we. Now, WeWork had a lot of backers, but the biggest and splashiest one was SoftBank. SoftBank invested about $18.5 billion in the IPO lead-up, anticipating that it would go public for far more than the $47 billion valuation. Except WeWork had never turned a profit, had no timeline for when it would, and was burning through cash for its own IPO filings. Once that fact became public, along with a number of other revelations about questionable business practices and possible self-dealing, investors got pretty nervous. So the IPO was called off, Adam Newman was ousted, and valuation plummeted, going below $3 billion. With the charismatic Newman out, SoftBank took control and brought in a new executive chairman, Marcelo Claré, and a new CEO, Sandeep Mithrani, to turn the business around. That was in the fall of 2019. New execs started laying out a plan for profitability, And then, in 2020, the pandemic hit. WeWork made significant layoffs, shuttering locations and a restaurant co-working arm. But all said and done, the pandemic may not have been the worst thing in the world for flex office providers like WeWork. As people come back to the office, one thing they're looking for is the flexibility that WeWork and its competitors are ready to provide. The $9 billion valuation from its merger with SPAC BowX brings the valuation back up from a low around $2.9 billion, though that's still far below the $47 billion dreams of 2019. Now, with WeWork training, it'll be up to public investors to determine just how much We is worth.